Hello, hello, everybody. I'm going to, uh, tonight, we'll talk about the general idea of Yom Kippur, but uh, as I promised Debbie, uh, I will do the lecture, which is so easy and so simple, so motivational, but uh, in the same time, there is depth into it, because we cannot just give Yom Kippur just like that. It's going to be super deep, but you wouldn't know it, if, if that makes sense at all. So, I mean, when we talk about uh, the old concept of, you know, consciousness, different type of consciousness, we need to understand something, um, uh, maybe I should say, incredible, something that we need to, to focus on. And, you know, when we ask ourselves, what is really um, a consciousness? What is exactly a conscious? What, what, is, what, is a, what is it made from? You know, when you think about awareness, consciousness, what is conscious? What is it all about? You know, because everybody say consciousness, consciousness, you gotta work on your consciousness. These words by itself are already getting old, you know? So what is consciousness? Well, I'm sure, I'm sure you heard about it, that in our mind we have the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, right? I mean, we're all familiar with that. And the conscious mind is the normal thing that you're familiar with, the five senses, the decision you make based on five senses, and you have the subconscious mind, which is everything stored there. Once you're able to uh, uh, penetrate to the subconscious mind, you are able to change the engine. But it's difficult, hello, big. But it's difficult uh, to, change, to change the engine because how do you get into the subconscious mind after the conscious mind telling you, you know, that's your problem, that's another problem, and you cannot overcome it. I will. The conscious itself, we talk about conscious, you didn't miss anything. Talk about the subconscious mind. So the subconscious mind, basically, to get into it, we gotta do something. We cannot continue the same. If you continue the same, the same, the same, say, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change tomorrow. I can do it. It's nice, it's motivational. You know, two days it will be motivational. And then the fourth day, the fifth day, you're gonna start getting depressed again and fall again to the same thing. It, make, it makes sense, right? It, it makes sense. So how do we go into the subconscious mind? How are we going to that storage that we can start changing things, change the wire? And the idea of what the Kabbalah is teaching us, what the Zohar is teaching us, a person has to be aware that there is a body. And the body that we have was created by human. I don't know if you know the human that create your body. They call them father and mother, sperm and egg. This is the body. See? This is the body. Within the body, there is a soul. The soul is divided into three levels. You don't have to remember the names. It's called neshama, ruach, nefesh. You don't have to remember those names, okay? Neshama, ruach, nefesh. Which means neshama is taking care of your mind. Ruach taking care of your speech. And nefesh taking care of your action. All within the frame of reference of the soul. Where the body is conscious mind. The body, I saw it. I heard it. I'm victim because you hurt me. Everything that you say, you're right. You know, would you tell me that the victim is not a victim? It's a victim. What do you want from him? What do you want from her, right? If something bad happened to you, it did happen to you. Can you get out of it? No, it did. It did happen. Somebody stole your money. It happened. But those are the things that happen in the conscious mind. When a person starts changing, transforming from conscious mind into the subconscious mind, and the way to do it again is by letting go of the body a little bit. You let go of the body, because the body itself, remember, made from physicality, and allow the soul to shine. Now, how do you let go of the body? The Talmud writes something very interesting. The Talmud was written about 2,000 years ago. And the Talmud writes like that that the body consciousness is built basically from two aspects. There is two aspects that build the body consciousness, and it will be there for life. One is food, okay? The other side, sexuality, okay? When I say sexuality, it doesn't mean sex only. It means creation of the body. It has to be intercourse. I mean, today you could use sperm and eggs, but still you have to have some type of desire that come from the body. 
So those are the two angels or the two forces that create the body consciousness. Once a person is able to maintain a control over those two things, which is difficult, right? When we sing a good cake, mm, 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 the body starts controlling us. Eh, I want it now. Nah, nah, nah. Or attraction, so the power of attraction, physical attraction. You feel something. I don't know, I think I met my soulmate. Oh my God, amazing. No, it's not your soulmate, it's, it's body mate. It's not soulmate, body mate. They smell good, they look good, they're perfect for you. But it's not soul yet. So once I'm able to try, at least not succeed, try to work on my body consciousness, then the subconscious come back to life, which is the soul. And it's so beautiful. And then you can start controlling everything in your mind, everything in your life. But when the food, water, tea, cheesecake, becoming my new god, then I'm worship the body. Now, what about people who go to the gym? Some people go to the gym every day. Some people do <laughs> boxing all, all, all day long. Boom, 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 you know? <laughs> so, so what about this? I mean, this, is, this, is this subconscious mind? Well, it depends where you're going. Are you going there all the time because you want to make sure the body is attracted the other body? Or you go there because you want to make sure the body is healthy so it can carry the soul which is in it. All in the mind, guys. Always when you do something, think. Just stop, think. Mm, why am I doing it for that? Okay, good idea. But don't worry. We are not angels. Nobody expects you be, to become an angel. Okay? So that's the basic idea of subconscious and conscious before we go into um, the subject that I really want to talk about tonight. But is that clear? Is there a question on that? Was that, was that clear to you? The, you're new. I don't know you. I know you. Okay. Was that clear? Yes. Yes. yes okay. All right. So, on Tuesday night, if I'm not mistaken, there is a celebration called Yom Kippur, Yom Kippurim. You know, it's a celebration. Some call it religious celebration. Some call it spiritual celebration. Some don't even call it because they don't know it exists. You know, so it doesn't really matter. But we need to have some type of understanding what exactly it represents. Yom Kippur that falling on Tuesday night is one day in your life, only one day that it happened, that you actually get rid of your body. Your body don't, no, not going to control you. Your body is out of control. It's all a soul day. Whatever you do in that day, define how much soul power you're going to have for the rest of the year. Most people, when you become fanatic and religious, Think, oh my God, you fast. And when you fast, you know, God will forgive you for your sin and you're going to be just fine. That's how religious mind people thinking. But the truth of the matter is that that specific day is the most powerful day that can take your soul in a higher level. If you do it right. And I'm going to go to step by step how, how to do it. But before that, I will tell you the story that's written in the Torah, in the Bible, so you would know what exactly happened. Now, don't be shy to stop me or ask me a question. I mean, if, you, if I don't see your hand, just, just speak. Because my glasses are definitely not going to see your hand. Okay. All right. So let me tell you the story from the Bible. No, no, don't worry. I left it there, I guess. So the story in the Bible goes like that. And it's a weird story. And those of you who are animal lover, not going to like the story, okay? Really not going to like it. But I will tell you the story. I didn't write the story, but I trust the writer, God. So the story goes like that. It's written that in the old days in the desert, when the Israelites went from Egypt into the desert, the way they celebrate Yom Kippur, that day of consciousness, they used to take two goats. Two goats. And then there was a man. That man's name is E.T. Can you imagine E.T. from the movie, like E.T.? <laughs> but not E.T. like <laughs> E.T. A human called E.T. Ish E.T. A.T. in Hebrew, in the old Hebrew, means the, the person for the time, the man for the time, the man of the time. He had one eye. He had one eye. And he had evil eye in this eye. And I'm telling you just basic story. The high priest, the Kohen Gadol, you know, will take two goats, and he will make a lottery, and he say whatever goat will go for sacrifice, it will go to God. 
The other goat will go to the dark side, really dark side. I'm, I cannot even mention the names of how many angels of the dark side. What do we do with the goat of the dark side? They push it, forgive me for all the animal lover, they push it off the cliff in the desert. And the man with the one eye, with the evil eye, take the all negativity from the human being around and laser it into that goat. And before it falling into the ground, and forgive my, um, how I drew that picture, that goat basically falling apart. And that's been that Yom Kippur begin and the conscious mind start to begin. Now, I know that the story is not convincing and it's on some primitive story, but I need to explain to you, those of you who are animal level, um, there is something called reincarnation. I don't know if you believe in it. Reincarnation means that human has to come as a reincarnation either to minerals, vegetables, animals, and human. Why, why we come as a reincarnation? Because reincarnation is solving a lot of issues. People think that if they kill, they go to prison. No, it doesn't work like that in the reincarnation world. If a person kills, prison will not help. They have to reincarnate into stone. It can be diamond, yes, it can be diamond. Any stone, any mineral, okay? Or water, they have a choice. On the menu, there's two choices. Would you like water or stone? And then they stay there for 400 years, 500 years, that's the prison, that's there. That's why it's, it's very dangerous to drink from uh, a running water. I always tell you that before. Don't ever drink from a river which is running water because most reincarnation, when you see waterfall or running water, don't drink directly. If you have a cup, just take a cup and do a blessing if you know and drink it. Don't drink directly because within the water there is a lot of reincarnation of killer that that's what they have to go through in life until they finish their tikkun it's called, the karma, the dharma, and then they can be reincarnated as a human being again. Goat also carry within them a reincarnation of people that they have to go through that. Now, why two goat? Before I explain that, we need to know in the beginning of creation, and you need to remember it for the rest of your life. In the beginning of creation, before the universe as we know it like now, because this universe is not how God created the world. This universe is called in Hebrew, Olam, O-L-A-M, Olam. Olam comes from the roots of the word Ne'elam, disappear. Okay, so this universe, in Hebrew, it's called disappear. What's disappear? The power of the divine, the power of the creator, is not here. So as when something exists strongly in this universe, that means there is not enough divine in it. Less divine, more existent. More divine, no existent. Does it make sense or it's confusing you? Why does it make sense? Why does it make sense? Ask. I mean, don't agree with me. I mean, just everybody. Well, for me, I mean, I would think, I think it's more confusing because I think that, you know, That's fair. The strongest would have the most Okay, okay. Opinion, ideas, what do you think? More the light appear, everything else disappear. Less the light of the divine appear, everything is appear. Does it make sense to you? No, don't be shy. There's no <coughs> right or wrong here. It's idea, it's a concept. You cannot go wrong here. What you mean? Hmm? Okay, okay, I, I, I hear you, but, but let's, let's think about it like this. Where, if there is a father who's super successful and the son just begins his time, can the son appear next to the father? Then the son will be there or he will be canceled because the father is in the room. What do you think? Be canceled, right? Makes sense. When I will take a small candle of Hanukkah and I will go in a sunny day in California or the Palm Spring and I will light that candle. Can you see the flame? No. no. Good. Very good. So wherever there is a lot of light, everything else diminish. Every else diminishes. So whenever there is appearance 
of um, everything else, it's good. Whenever we see that there is everything, and it's included with people, by the way, I know, I know it's confusing. Everybody want to become somebody, right? We all want to become somebody. But more somebody you become, maybe there is a lot of nobody in it. Why do you chase to become somebody? Maybe there is emptiness, right? So the world, this universe, in Hebrew called Olam. Why? Because everything disappears, and that's why it's appeal. Whenever there is fulfillment, there is nothing. Whenever there is emptiness, there is everything. Okay? Are you with me or I lost you? Yeah. Okay? Wherever there is fulfillment, there's no existence. Because it's all there. Once I'm empty something, there is appearance of something. Once I fill it up, if everything is perfect, when you're going to be thousand people who are all perfect, they look the same. When do you start to see differences between people? Different kind of pain, different kind of lack, different kind of issues. So the way that God created this universe, it was perfectly fulfilled. But we were not happy with that. We mean we were part of the receiver. We couldn't be happy with just taking and be passive and part of the creation. So we ask for a gift. The gift is to empty us from everything. But the reason we would like to be emptied from everything, so we would like to give the chance for the divine to fill it up. So every time we want is only to do a favor to the creator. Only to do a favor to the divine. See, if I want to drink tea, I really don't want it. Ah, I don't want tea. Oh, but I know how much the divine want to give it to me. Let me have it. That was the original way of the creation. Now, with the time, that changed. What happened? My desire to want something changed. Now I want because I don't have. I don't want because I want to give you a chance to give me. And if you will remember that, I promise you, if you can remember just that part, this last 10 minutes, you can solve any problem in your life. Any problem. Anything not working will start working in your life. I repeat again. Two types of desire within us. One desire comes from emptiness. One desire is coming from sharing. I want to share with you. That's why I want to take from you. But you have to be authentic. You have to be real. You cannot lie to yourself. I mean, you can lie to everybody else. I always tell my children, you know, if you decide one day to lie, when you go to bed, at least tell the truth to yourself under the blanket when nobody listens. Don't lie to yourself. One person, you can never lie to. You. You are the most important person. Don't lie to yourself. Now, these two forces that call the receiving, the receiving because I want to give pleasure to the Creator, or the receiving because I don't have. So now, I gave this uh, lecture in New York two years ago. We had uh, what we call Kabbalah gym. And um, a lady asked me a good question. Said, Liao, can you answer that question? Because, you know, New York is different than here. People ask in the face. Nobody would sit quiet, you know. You know? So she asked me. <laughs> and she's brave in front of everybody. She says, excuse me, I want to ask you something. I said, okay. So my husband, my husband is very cheap but he has a lot of money. If I ask him to buy me a ring that costs 200,000, is that sharing or is that receiving? <laughs> it's just true, true, yeah. She threw me the question. <laughs> so, well, uh, I answer like this. I don't know where you're coming from. Do you want the ring or you want to help him not to be cheap? And she was honest enough. She said, I have to think about it. I appreciate that. Because a lot, a lot of time, a person says, no, I just want to help him. I want to help him. You know, I'm saving my husband. You know, but she was honest. I have to think about it. I said, thank you. The idea before you receive something, you're allowed to ask for everything you want, everything you want. But why do you want it? Because you don't have it? Or be want to give a chance for the person to give it? <coughs> Going back to the two goat. One goat to God. One goat to the dark side. If you want to know the name of the dark side, there's many names. You can call it S-A-T-A-N. It can call the 
the DEV, the, 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 the other, the angel of death, you know, the old name. There's about 10 names, about 10 names. So who are you working for? Every time that you are feeling what you don't have, you're activating, you're activating the dark side of yourself, which is the conscious mind and the body. Every time you are connecting to the sharing, to the receiving, you activate the subconscious mind. It's so powerful. You become so powerful. Because you're basically walking around, I want nothing. Nothing. So when you want nothing and you're able to walk like that, and then when you want something, you know what? I'm going to receive something. Like the story I think I told you on Rosh Hashanah about the Moroccan family. I told you this the first day. My, my friend from New York, yeah. that, that when he invites you, you have to do a diet for 10 oh, days. Yeah. This Moroccan family, the tables are long tables, and you got to eat, and I didn't want to go. You, you, you met me at that night in New York when we went to Michael. I said, why are you late? I said, well, he <laughs> catch wind industry. I said, we're coming. So we go in there. I said, Mayor. Please, Mayor, I'm, I'm begging you, I can't, I can't. I have invited the Upper East Side. So no, you invite to me. And then he feed you, but you don't want to eat. But once you eat, what happened to him, he's happy. So now you receive for the sake of sharing. If you meet my mom, my mom cooked like two weeks before I arrived to Israel. So already cooking and cooking. So now there's food forever, right? I mean, the whole army arrived, there's food and food and food. Now what are I gonna do? I, I, I'm not gonna eat everything, I mean, I'm going to taste here and there. But is she looking at me? You don't like it? No, I like it. I like it. <laughs> and you take a little from the spoon. You know, you look like you enjoy it, but you can eat a lot. And the idea is you're receiving, become the sharing. That's the ultimate Kedusha. That's the ultimate holiness. Yom Kippur, in the day of Yom Kippur, you elevate your mind in such a high level. And what do we do? We're fasting. We fast again the day, no water, no food. But we're not fasting because we need to suffer. Many religious people want people to be scared of God. And they preach people how to be afraid of God. Whenever you're Christian, Muslim, Hindu. Uh, no, Hindu actually don't scare people. Uh, Jewish, you know, I always say the difference between Catholic mom to a Jewish mom. I always said in my lecture, the Catholic mom said, you know, uh, um, uh, if you're not going to finish the food, I'm going to kill you. A Jewish mom, it's a different guilt. If you're not going to finish the food, I'm going to kill myself. So, you know, <laughs> different, different thing. And the idea is to get into a point when we understand that God loves you. No matter what you're going to do, God loves you. So, the universe is also divided to two. Everything I'm going to make, make sure that you understand everything divided to two. There is one side of the universe that Governed or controlled by the clipot. Clipot, those of you who never heard the name before, clipot means the shells, the negative forces. It's called the shell. Those clipot are basically are coming from the dark side. And the idea of the clipot who coming from the dark side, mm -hmm. this is all governed by the negative consciousness that I want, I want, I want to take. The other part of the universe is the part in the universe that make fruit. Meaning, what is that make fruit? What is a fruit made from? You plant a seed and you try to give. You're all about giving, you're all about sharing. Now, we want to be always in a place that we can create. How do you create? There is only one way we can create in this universe. Only one way, and you have to remember that, is by having a choice, remember, two condition. Having a choice and earning everything we have. If you don't earn everything you have, you lost your choice. Everything you have. Stay away from gift. Everybody loves gift. Oh my God, it's my birthday. I got a gift. Very nice. How long is it going to last? Half an hour. Goodbye. Everybody left. You stay with the gift. No, bravo. Nothing happened. No. no. What happened? How do you earn it? How do you earn wisdom? How do you earn beauty? How do you earn speed of the body? How do you earn money that you receive? All of those things. we all talented. we all born with some gift. How do we earn it? The only way we can earn our gift is by sharing. Sharing doesn't mean always money. Sharing can be love, can be kindness, can be good words, can be something. So we always have to think about, okay, I have, and not for guilt. Don't fall into that guilt trip. Oh my God, I have to share. God give me too much. No, there's no guilt in sharing. Sharing is fun. 
if your sharing is no longer fun, it's not a sharing. It's not a sharing. Sharing is to be fun. I enjoy to give. I enjoy to give what God gave me. I was born wise. I want to share wisdom. I was born beautiful. I want to share beauty. I was born fast. I want to teach people how to be fast. Everything. I was born organized. I want to be organized. Everybody has a gift. I, I never find a human being that doesn't have a gift. But sometimes people get depressed because they look at others and say, how come they have and I don't? That's come from where? From the goat that's falling down the mountain. And remember, those goats, by the way, the, the Midrash, the story tells, say that when the uh, second goat see the first goat being sacrificed to God, it said that the goats start laughing. Because, and then they bring the goat in front of all the nation of Israel, and the goat doesn't know yet it's about to be pushed down the mountain. And the, and the Midrash say it's like our life. You know, we, we sometimes feel on top of the mountain, and the goat start to realize, maybe I am the leader. Maybe Moses is not the leader. Maybe it's me. It's just a minute before the goat been pushed down the mountain. Many times happen to us because we're so busy with ourselves that we are a minute away from falling, and we look at the other goat being sacrificed. Oh, I'm the chosen. And then everything is gone. So how can we keep our mind and ourselves always in the right place by sharing. Why do I share? So when you get out of here, think about what's your gift. Before you keep your use the back list, what is your gift? Don't look at what you don't have. Forget about what you don't have. Forget that part. Don't be busy with it. I promise you the universe will give you everything you don't have. If you're busy with your gift and earn everything you have, the universe will fulfill you with gift that you wouldn't even know where it's come from. But when you're busy with what you don't have, you might receive it, you might not, but you will always be busy with how to fulfill that, that lack that you have. Now, any question before, because I share with you already a lot of information, and I will stop if there is a question. And the problem, I don't know where I put my glasses, so I don't, I cannot see expression. I like to see people's faces and <laughs> see expression. Now I'm talking and I don't know what's going on. Yeah. It's funny, I know. I know I put it so, oh, here it is. Forgive me, people at home. All right, I gotta see expression, otherwise. It's more fun. After all, I'm a face reader, I gotta see. Oh, much better. All right, everybody, everybody's home. So question, idea, before we climbing to another level. What were the two universes? The two universes, okay. So the, our physical universe is divided to two. Okay. Uh, it's called in Kabbalah, Malchut. Now that Malchut is divided, Malchut means kingdom, Malchut is divided to two. The one which bring destruction and the one that bring fruit. The one that bring destruction connect to the part within us which I don't have. I always don't have. How do you say destruction in Hebrew? Choban. Choban, yes. Choban, yes. Choban. So we would like to connect to Perot, Lashen is a perot. So, fruit or destruction? Fruit or destruction? Now, fruit has to do with planting the seed and giving. you giving. You think about, how can I give what I have? Again, don't, money is the easiest thing to give, so I, don't right away go to physicality. I give an apple, I give charity in the street, I help, that's good. You know, giving according to the uh, Torah, the Zohar, there are three levels of giving. You have to remember, physicality is first. Physicality includes money, clothing, fruit, and so on and so on. Second is time. Third is love. The love is the, is the most difficult one. Most difficult. You don't practice. Second? Second is time. Time. Okay, so it's physical, time, and love. Why is love difficult? Because it's not about giving love to the people you love. It's about giving love to the people you can't stand and being nice. <laughs> Now you know why in Yom Kippur he's supposed to go to some people and say, I'm sorry. Why do I have to say I'm sorry to my enemy? They hurt me. No, it's for you actually. Why is it for you? Because you can show yourself, I can overcome any challenge in my life. Nothing bothers me. Now if you have people in your life that you still hate, you gotta remove it. And immediately. Because it's not about, let's say somebody really hurt you. Somebody stole something for you. Or somebody hurt you. Somebody cheated on you. I don't know what happened in your life. But the bad things really happened to people. If you don't forgive them, what happened to them? They stay in your life. They stay in your life. You want me to tell you even more than that? Those exact people you didn't forgive, come back with your next lifetime to do the work. 
It's scary. And they come closer. And they come closer. So they become a family member, husband, wife, all of that. Because you have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. Reincarnation wars. You cannot run away. So when I forgive somebody who hurt me, I say goodbye to them. Forgive them. You know, there been me passing, uh, uh, there is a cafe that they like to go on Olympic. So we pass it by, we, we do our walk, and uh, there is a, uh, a gentleman who hurt me really bad in the last three and a half years. And uh, I'm walking, uh, and Debbie see me, he said, oh, you know, these guys, I said, no, I, I gotta do it. It's in my journey, it's in my journey. And I said, hi, give a hug, this is it. So Debbie and me steady, we steady like a light to get our coffee. And he said, I can't believe it. I said, what do you want? What's my choices here? What are your choices? It came into my life. I have to deal with it. I don't think I'm a loser. I think it's an opportunity for me to deal with forgiveness so I don't have to deal with that person again. I don't want him. I don't want to invite him into my next lifetime. I want to be a little bit more fun, you know? So any issue that you didn't finish, it becoming your issue. And any finish that you overcome, any tikkun, tikkun karma, uh, uh, correction, you overcome. And I'm sure some of you, uh, relationship, divorce, uh, stealing, we all have issues. And uh, all human beings have issues. But you gotta forgive, not because you do to them a favor, you do yourself a favor. Don't feel like, oh my God, I forgive the worst person. Am I spiritual? No, you're not. You're selfish. You're selfish, that's a great idea, but you're selfish. And say goodbye. More you forgive people, more free you are. And that's why it say when you can forgive someone, it's like you're eating poison and you wish for them to die. But you just ate the poison. Why would you wish for them to die? Because you're dealing with it burning inside of you. They're not going to change. The people who hurt you, not going to change. There's a, a, another, another girl in New York, wonderful girl, Israeli like me, and uh, she married uh, a playboy. So his ex-wife divorced him because he was cheating on her. And um, he's a dear friend of mine, but he has his issue. He's a good friend of mine. So she come to see me and said, Elia, what do you think? This is that. So me, usually I said, what do I know? I mean, this is all in the hand of God. He said, stop it. So I don't, I don't want to get involved with this. You know, I knew. You know. So she called me uh, six months ago, unfortunately, that they're going the wrong the, the, the other direction. And she found him with another girl, and this and that. And, and she was angry with me a little bit, but then we talk. And I, I said to her, you know, I know him so well. I mean, he's not going to change. That's who he is. He's not a bad guy. He just have a little issue. That's his thing. His thing is, relationship is not, is, is the best person, but don't put him into a commitment, into a relationship. That's the one thing he cannot do. And she wanted him to become that. But he can't. Can't. He cannot become it. And don't change people, trust me, forgive people, but don't change them, okay? Don't change people, forgive them, but don't change them. Forgive them. They're not going to change, okay, I'm happy we're clear on that. You need to forgive and also ask for forgiveness, because sometimes it's just, when you just forgive, it's a little, you can't, 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 You mean two people need to forgive each other? Is that yeah, what? I think the idea, you cannot take care of their part. That's a sad part about spirituality. I know we want to control it, and it happened to me many times. I want to control the other person, but we can't. They have their own journey. We just happen to be on the same journey together. And it's tough because people commit for marriage, they do the chupa, the kiddushim, and it's serious. And then they have a commitment. And then things happen, but it's not your fault. It's not their fault. It's their responsibility. But sometimes it's your responsibility. Why? Why it's my responsibility? I don't know. Maybe if this person cheated on you, it's because you were something that you were not. I don't know. You were yeah. Something you, you, met, you met each other for a certain frequency or, uh, that you're supposed to meet or, or the, what they call the law of attraction. So you're supposed to meet, but it's never your fault. It's your responsibility to be in it or outside of it. That's the only responsibility you have. But you can't change them. And I'm telling you to thousands of people, zebra will stay zebra. 
tiger will stay tiger. If they decide later on to convert to an elephant, that's their business. You know? But at that moment they are together with the person, it's, we have to accept them as they are because they're not going to become something else if you force them. They will fake it. They will be like in a shell. But the inside, the core of who they are, will pop out one day. It's almost like to take a beach ball and put it under the water in the ocean, and I'm holding it. Once I let it go, it's, it's going to come out of the water. No matter what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, I can do my films, uh, poets. Uh, you know, suppression doesn't help. Transformation helps, but suppression, it's not going to do anything. You know, and we like to suppress people that bother us. I work in two years in a rehab center. And you see the transformation of people, it takes a long time. Sometimes six months, sometimes more, sometimes 10 years. They have to decide. And uh, one of the places I work, it was for people with no money. They have no money. And I volunteered there. I enjoyed so much to help kids. And it was about 230 kids. And one of them didn't make it. He ran away from the facility, used drugs, overdose, and died. So when I come back, I, I was asking, where's, where's the guy? And the owner told me, Eliyahu is no longer with us. You know, he's gone. So was it my responsibility? Was it their responsibility? Was that? We did everything we can, but once you go into that type of job, you realize they have to choose. And it's a similar thing with people outside. You have to choose. And to have choice, as I write here, you have to earn. If you don't earn what you have, you lost your choice. Let's say a person born rich. If a person born rich, you got to earn it. How do you earn it? Yes, giving money is one of it, but it's not enough. You have to teach other people how to make money. Uh, people born uh, beautiful, people born uh, with capability of a certain thing. We need to find a way to share it in a way that will be good for the others. And this is the mind that will keep you into still having choice. You're losing your choice once you don't earn everything. It's very important for all of us to remember that. So don't make a list of what you don't have. Make a list of what you have. Because I know if you did Tony Robbins, Les Brown, or what else out there, all those courses of motivation, it's most of the name of those courses is how to get what you want. How to really, really get what you want. How to really, really, really get what you want. Course number four, how to really, 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 really get what you want. You know, that's, that's what the course is, you know? And here I'm telling you, I would like to teach you how not to get what you want. It's depressing. It's not motivational. But it's a self-control, and it's not easy. It's not, it's not fun. I'm not expecting you to, to, hey, we're doing it. No, but think about the moment between you. I mean, I believe I have a food addiction, right? If you put me next to dessert, and you tell me it's not going to make you fat, I think I'm going to finish it all by myself. I have no problem. You know, if you get me that box of Nutella, I'm very good with the Nutella. I think we have a relationship. You guys can sit, have one spoon, and say goodbye. For me, I don't get the point here. You know, my mom told me to finish everything that exists, so you got to finish it. So I will eat and eat it, so it's addiction. But it's addiction that I have to work on that. And once I look at it, there is a moment before I'm eating, while I'm eating, after I'm eating. The same with everything you do. So before I'm eating, there is a beautiful moment between me and what I desire. So I'm, I'm sitting here waiting for that to fulfill my life. Nothing else exists. There's Nutella, there's cheesecake, there's, I don't know, other thing. Nothing exists. So it's just my desire, my fulfillment, and I don't care about nothing else. Once I'm able to at least control it five minutes, ten minutes, there is between me and my, my fulfillment energy that you cannot see physically. I create energy. There is vibration between these two. That's the plus. I'm the minus because I'm running on empty. That's my fulfillment. So it's almost like the light bulb. You know, you have the filament between the light bulb. So that's my plus. I'm the minus. Between that, there is a wire. You follow me? And then we create light together. So we need all the time the plus around you. You need things to be attracted to. Don't ever kill your, you need to fulfill. I want, I want. Always say I want. But once you fulfill all that I want, is it control you or you control it? You're going to buy shoes, dress. 
Who saw who first? The dress saw you first or you saw the dress first? <laughs> who controlling who? Is the dress say, hey, I'm on sale, come in, come inside. You don't think this, uh, the dress is conscious, right? Or it shoots. No, they do. They do. They do. Everything is consciousness. Everything is consciousness. You need to understand. So everything is vi vibration. Once you're able to want everything and to let go of everything at the same time, that's when the energy begins. There is uh, some people who want nothing. They flop. There's nothing going on in their life. There is people who want everything and take it. They're also dead. So there is two types of death. Death when I don't want, death when I want and I take. And there is one type of life. I want it all and I'm playing with it. I'm saying, not right now. To myself, not to them. Not right now. Eliyahu, wait with the cake. Maybe tomorrow. You can take a bite right now. That's how you create energy. You have to want. If you stop wanting, you're over. You're finished. You're dead. And you're going to speak like those people say, how are you? How was your day? Fine, fine, fine. You're not the fine? <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Fine, like a dead words. Maybe because I'm Israeli, I can't stand the word fine. When people tell me fine, I like either I'm the best or I'm depressed. Okay, we can take care of that. <laughs> Give me zero or hundred. I don't understand the between. Fine, fine. How is business? Fine. How is your love life? Fine. How is this? Fine. It's okay. No, we make it. You know, you gotta go for that. I want it all, and I'm capable to say no to it. I want it, and no. I want it, no. It's a game all day long. You know, you ever been on a highway and there is traffic and you let car go in front of you? That's, that's, a, that's powerful. You just create energy around you. Try it. Try it. And you go mad. You can't take it anymore. And you drive. And today I was allowing something to go in front of me because I was late to the dentist. And, and uh, this guy doesn't even see that I'm letting him in. Oh, come in. You know, he doesn't see me. So I continue. I said, why? He doesn't want to come in. So not every time you want to share, there is always a receiver. That's also a test. That's the next level. I want to give you a cake. I don't want your cake. Don't get insulted. It's okay. It doesn't mean they don't like you. It's when it's not the time for you to share. Or what you share is not what they want. Be sensitive. You want to give them what you want to give, or you want to give them what's good for them. Control freak syndrome, right? All right. So we need to understand it. Now, going back to Yom Kippur. Now, the idea with happiness, I say you have to earn. If you want to be happy, everything has to be earned. So you're not going to be happy when you get what you want. You have to remember that. If you remember that, your life will change. Every time you get what you want, you're going to get depressed half an hour later. <laughs> Please remember that rules. You only can be happy when you overcome, when you overcome something in your life. So you have to, I don't want to say invite challenge, but deal with some challenges you have in your life, specifically before Yom Kippur. What is your challenge right now? What are you going through right now? And don't focus on that little desire that I want that toy and I cannot have it. Mm -hmm. That comes from the left column of Bina. It's coming from a negative place of I don't have. It's coming from a place of lack, of emptiness. And remember, the place of emptiness creates that goat that we push off the mountain. You want to come from a place, I want it because I want to give the universe a chance to give me. I'm open myself to receive. I'm open myself to receive. Please, universe, if there is anything, I'm not going to stop wanting, but if the universe thinks that that's something that needs to come to me, I welcome it. But I don't want because I don't have, I want because I know how much the universe loves me and how much the universe wants to give me. So you open yourself, okay? Don't forget this. Now, Always push yourself forward. Always want to achieve more. And now, I'm going to read from the Zohar in Hebrew. I didn't create it in English because I was worried that maybe the translation will not be the best. Okay? So I'm going to read it. And through that, we will understand what exactly happened in Yom Kippur. So again, Yom Kippur, we're coming. And we can remove all the sin. What is a sin? Sin. What is a sin? Sin means that every time that you apply your emptiness and you fulfill your emptiness, that's called a sin. Every time that you are addicted to your emptiness, emptiness of love, emptiness of money, emptiness of beauty, emptiness of health, emptiness of something, and you're busy with it. In Kabbalah, it's called Gimel Rishonot 
Okay, it's called Keter Chochma Bina. It's the three levels. You don't have to memorize that. Keter Chochma Bina, where all the original light that God created came from. So remember, the original blessing, how God created this universe, is no longer appear. I said it in the beginning, because it become Olam. It become a new creation. So the Zohar in verse 101, in the portion of Tetzaveh, write like that. How do we get out of all the negativity we accumulate the entire year? We keep drawing almost every day. Every time I empty, I want to fill it up. That's the nature of people. You ask all people. I don't have money, I got to go to work. I don't have love, I have to find a soulmate. I'm getting weight, I have to go to the gym. You know, that's, that's people, the nature of people. We want to get something, we go and get it. We not try to say, maybe I should not be busy with my emptiness. Now, when we do that, we are overly using force that we shouldn't be using because that force going against us after that. The master of that force, okay, the master of that force is waiting for us to pay the bills exactly on the day of Yom Kippur. And we need to trick him. Because if we're not going to trick that master, we're not going to do so well during the year. So let's say exactly what we do with the goat again. Try to imagine a king that is very upset with his son. Karala Sentara, he, he called that in charge of the police, in charge of judgment. There's one important and scary person that is the one to manifest all the judgment that need to be manifest with human. The king has a son. The son was using only the emptiness. I don't have candy, I don't have money, I don't have that. I don't, and he's sucking all the energy. So the king called in charge and said, I think it's time to punish my son. So that master of judgment was invited by the king. Oh, and the son is there sitting. And he, you walk into the house of the king, to the palace, to eat. The child will look at that judgment minister and look at his father. Nobody is at home. So the only reason he's there is just to punish me. He realized because this guy, that's, that's his job. Masa, alach venitratza emo. The son was tricky. He said, I have to get friendly with that dark side. I have to find a way to be friendly with him. Otherwise, it would be a problem. Maybe they take me to exile for 20 years. The king was so happy to see that the punisher and his son are talking that he said, we have to make a meal. The king make a meal for himself, for the king, and the king's sons. But he said, make sure the minister of judgment doesn't know we're making that meal. The king said, hey, if the minister of judgment will walk in and will see me sitting with my son, after I'm supposed to punish my son because I told him what he did, then it will be, he might create a big issue here. Masa, what he did, the king, he said to the chef, do me a favor, make sure that he sit at my table, the minister of judgment, and give him good food like you give for the king. And by him sitting with the king and having so much food, he will not even know that me and my son having a good time in, a, in another room. If the king wouldn't give the special meal and kavod and pride to the dark side, to the minister of judgment, the minister of judgment will never get out of that house until he punished the kids. 
כך אמר הקדוש ברוך הוא לישראל. The same thing happening with the Israelite. הזמינו בית צעירים ליוז טו גוט, אחד לי ואחד לאותו מלשין. One is going for the father and the son, which the father related to God, the son related to human being, to us, the people, who all year long just sucking from that left column, gimel rishonot, ketar chokma vina, all that energy we're stealing. <coughs> and he make one goat, he call it malashin. Malashin means snitch. Somebody who snitch. Because what is the dark side does? He convinces you to do negative thing. And then after you do it, he go and snitch on you to the king. כדי שיחשוב שאכל מסעודה שלי, ולא ידע משמחת הסעודה האחרת שלנו, וייקח חלק ההוא וילך לדרכו ויפרד מביתי. So by giving to the dark side, dead goat, with injecting with all the negativity, he's so happy. And he continue, and he say, שלא יימצא לפניו אותו מלשין ולא בעלי דין, בעת שהוא מוציא כל הברכות, הוא מאיר לכל, וכל חירות, הוא מתרסלל את, ההוא נמצא במלכות וישראל מקבלים מאלו הברכות. All the freedom happening at that day of יום כיפור. Any type of freedom that you want to achieve in your life is יום כיפור. Unfortunately, you know, many people who celebrate יום כיפור, a lot of Jewish Orthodox, they have no idea this holiday is taking care of all problems. They look at it like fanatic, you have to pray, don't eat, don't drink, don't take a shower, and suffer. No. The reason you don't eat, the reason you don't drink, the reason you don't do physical things, because every physical thing you do has to do with conscious mind, has to do with the dark side. You don't want to do anything with that. You said, listen, that day I'm centering myself, meditation, pray, everything that needed, whatever I can do, and I don't want to touch food. Why not leather shoes? People normally don't wear leather shoes. Why not? Leather comes from animal. Animal has more desire than, let's say, fabric. Okay? It's different from, come from vegetables, come from animal. Those of you who know reincarnation has four levels. Human, animal, vegetables, mineral. So that's, that's the reason. So all what you do on Yom Kippur, you are centering yourself in such a high level that it fixes itself by itself. And all what you have to do is to remember this story. God is taking care of each and every one of us. Doesn't matter what you did wrong. Doesn't matter how bad you are. Doesn't matter how bad you are. All what you're going to do is to understand that right now you're elevating your subconscious mind into the highest level. And the conscious mind mistake is going to the dark side and he's happy to take it, by the way. He's taking all your negativity you did the whole year and he's happy to have it. Because he said, I convinced that person to do bad. That's my sin. And the king, God, say, of course it's yours. Let me give it back to you. I will talk to my son to give it back. And we put it into the goat. We give it back to him. And he's happy that he takes all the negativity. We are happy to start new after Yom Kippur. Right? Woo! And starting from the beginning. And everything starts working perfect in our life. Unfortunately, because, you know, people are going into more than the religious side of Yom Kippur, this explanation not exist in many places. So people kind of celebrating Yom Kippur, but not with that understanding. And that's why <coughs> there, either, there is either fanatic and religious, or there is totally people who are not into it at all, which is very sad for me to find the bridge. And I remember one time there was a story, Lower East Side Manhattan, before it was fancy and nice like now. So I was in Lower East Side, <coughs> and I came to give lecture. And my friend Leo is Israeli, so we Leo, this building, full with Israeli, just come and give a lecture. So I come, I just was in Wall Street, those of you who know Manhattan, and I come with a suit and tie, you know, give a lecture, normal. So I come from that lecture and I arrive to Leo. And Leo, and I see, you know, people, you know, what do you call it, punk, you know, with the air of the standing and the, the earring and green, blue, all kind of thing. Uh, so I'm si sitting there, tie, suit, and it's not working, you know, when the lecture is not working. So I'm giving them a lecture, this and that, and they're all looking like, what do you want from us? So Leo come to me and says, Leo, can I take you outside? I say, yes. 
So can you let go a little bit of some of the stuff? So okay, what do you want me to do? So just loosen up a little bit, loosen up. So okay, so I can take the tie off. So jacket, you know, be you. <laughs> so I'm the, the tie, and the, that's it. So still, I'm talking. It's not working. So it was a guitar there. So we took a guitar, put it there. I sing a song for them. It was a very funny. Sing a song, and people start coming even more. It's a true story. Start singing a song. I'm singing a song to them. They start, now I'm giving them a lecture with music. Actually, I'm da, 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 da. tell them, I want to tell you a story. Do, 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 do. And the story goes like this. Do, 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 do. From that, from that group, true story. The bee's laughing because she's in the back. From that, from that story, what happened? In Manhattan, it became now a large group of me telling lectures with music. It was, for me, it was embarrassed. You, you think it's cool. But for me, I didn't want it as a job because for me, I, I'm supposed to give a lecture, suit and tie me, oh, eh, real deal. You know, and I remember that we have a meeting and everybody said, yeah, you know, that's, um, it seemed like that's what people want. So I don't want to do that. It's not what I want. So no, but people are coming. And it started with five people, then 10, then 20, then 100. 100 people sitting on the floor and, and I'm, I'm looking. And it's embarrassing a little bit, you know, you're holding a guitar. It's, it's a little, you're a teacher and you sing a song like la, 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 la. Then you put the guitar, tell a story, people cry, and then a la, la, la again. And then tell a lecture and people go home. Maybe we should do it one day here. I'm not shy anymore. It was many years ago. NBC was there, the TV come to see what it's all about. And I like the kavod, the little bit pride and all this and that, but I didn't like the job. The reason I'm telling you that, because Every person you're going to meet in your life as a way that they will receive the light from you. Don't try to give it your way. Dress different for every person. King Solomon say like that. Educate the person you talk to based on their style, not based on your style. Those of you who want to read more depth on that, there is a book that was written by Esh Kodesh. Esh Kodesh was a rabbi that was, the reason they call him Esh Kodesh, he died in the Holocaust. Before he died, he buried his book in the camp. And they found him all the books after he died. And Rabbi Kolmus Kalman, his name. And he wrote a book, he has many books. One of them is uh, Student Obligation. It's called Student Obligation. In the book, Student Obligation, it's in English, by the way, as well. Within this book, he's talking about the parents, the teacher, that sometimes they're going too far just to share and help and guide, but they don't care about who they're guiding. Because every person is different. And if you want to grow spiritually, the most important thing, can you teach what you just learned? If you cannot teach what you just learned, you didn't get it. Practice, let's say tonight, if you get three, four points, go share it right away. Share it. Take some three people you know and say, I want to share it to practice my knowledge. Share it. A few moments here, a few moments here. And if you're able to do it and they got it, you're doing well. You're doing well. Any question, guys? I know I kept you. Oh, it's on time. I'm on time today. It's good. I'm doing well. Any question? Deb, I think I bombard them with too much information, no? It's enough, right? Yeah, there is more, but I don't want to. So let's do meditation before I let you go. Question, 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 question. Yes. Uh, what do you recommend for us to do in Yom Kippur? Yom Kippur, there is five restrictions. I mean, five not, not doing. Well, first, start with the not doing. We don't eat, but not we don't eat because of suffer. We don't eat because we stay away from physicality. So with that conscious meditation of that, we don't drink. We don't... Um, uh, take a shower, only for 25 hours. Uh, no perfume or any type of oil. No leather shoes, no sex. So those are the restriction of the not doing, which is, has to do with the body consciousness. Then, those of you are capable either to pray or to meditate or do something like that, uh, center yourself. Just center yourself in a place that, because sometimes they pray, people go to pray and then they forget because it becomes so fanatic that they forget to be spiritual. 
So that's why I said to people, yes, you can go around religious people if you can keep your mind good. I will be in Jerusalem, so I will be around hundreds of thousands of religious people, and I'm guiding some of them there. But still, I'm going there to guide a group of religious how to think different. And that's what I'm doing. So I said, stop. Yes, it's written, but what it means. So always ask why, why. But the best thing to do is just center yourself in a way that you said, I want to change my engine. The engine from last year is not working for me. It's not working. Sorry. God, you know it. I know it. Let's be honest. The engine I want to create, I want to receive everything just that I can do you a favor that I'm receiving it from you. So I don't want nothing from you, but I'm going to receive it because I know how much pleasure it's giving you. In Hebrew, it's called La'asot Nachat Ruach Liyotso. That a lot of people don't understand the verse. La'asot Nachat Ruach Liyotso, meaning to give pleasure to the Creator. I'm receiving, so the Creator has a pleasure. So that's the minimum we should do. The restriction is a must because I have to let the body wait. Said the body, please. A day before Yom Kippur, we have to eat as much as we can, not because of the fast. Rabbi Isaac Luria, who lived 500 years ago, explained that the 24 hours before the 24 hours of Yom Kippur is the day that you build the kli, you build the vessel. So with physical food, you're building the vessel. With Yom Kippur meditation, you fulfill the vessel. So the day before, you got to eat physical thing. Physical thing. And if you can eat every hour, it's great. Great. My favorite day of the year, right? I can do whatever I do. And... <laughs> And then the day after, the day after, this is the day that you are actually doing the restriction. So that's the minimum. If you want to do more pray, more Torah, more this, why not? Lama no, of course. But don't lose the consciousness. Stay there, hear the Torah, hear that. But don't be focused on the physicality of the Torah, the physicality of that. I'm sorry I'm not with you this year, but I'm going to Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem. Uh, I did this promise six months ago um, for a few people who gathered together and they want to do it uh, different. So I promised to be with them, and that's why I'm flying to help, and then I'm going to do Sukkot with another group to do another meditation. I'm not going to be here for Sukkot, so remember, Sukkot is different consciousness. It's not Yom Kippur. Sukkot is the consciousness of, um, let me explain it in the best way, of all your potential gift. What's appear in the frame of the Sukkah Sukkah, once you walk into a sukkah, it's not some historical event. Never look at spiritual thing as an historical event. Once you fall into a historical event, you become religious. The difference between religious people and spiritual people, spiritual people live in the moment. Religious people always go back to the past and say, well, the Israelite left to the sukkah, we do it. No, every year the sukkah is refreshed. We are into discovery channel, not history channel, okay? You understand the difference, right? Discovery channel, always discovery, the new thing. So Sukkot is about all your potential money, all your potential fame, all your potential you, everything is happening in the Sukkah. It's called in Hebrew, or Mekif, surrounding light. Debbie is gonna hit me soon. So you're giving too much information, am I right? Yeah. See, without glasses even, let me see. Am I right? Okay, let's do a short meditation, then we hug and, and uh, goodbye. All right, so close your eyes, please. Uh, 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 uncross arm and leg, please. They be never like when I give information because then the brain of people melt after they leave. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to think about one gift that you definitely know you have, the Creator gave it to you. It's your gift, it's you. Either you're born with it or you earn it. Think about that gift, please. Make sure you love that gift within you. Appreciate that gift. Have gratitude toward that gift. It's an amazing gift. It's your gift. It's part of you. Now I want you to think about someone you love. Really love. And I want to ask you something, and you should ask yourself the same thing. Can I give that gift to that person, or can I try to share part of that gift with that person? Ah, 
ask the divine to help you to be more sharing, to be more giving with the gift that the divine gave you toward other people. From this moment on, till Tuesday, I would like you to make an effort to share your gift with that individual, not from a place that you have to control them, from a place that you would like to share what the Divine gave you. Thank you, and have a great, great, great evening. Thank you very much. Thank you.